Hello, hello, Scorpio. Welcome to your January 2019 overview reading. This is good for you if you are a sun, moon, or rising Scorpio. And while I'm pulling these oracle cards, I just want to give a reminder. I'm not an astrologer. We're not talking about the astrology energy in January. This is a tarot reading. So just for those who are confused... So I wanted to put it out there. And I also want to let you know if you are interested in the full by sign love readings, the big love readings, um, those are available on my Patreon. You can check those out. January's are going to come out on the 1st and that is really going to be, um, you know, good for setting yourself up for success in 2019 in terms of relationships. So I'm really doing it as a way to kind of help guide manifestation, communication, and look at some of the oncoming energies. So check that out. It would be awesome to have you on there. Okay, so the first thing coming up for Scorpio in January is gifts to the portal. What are you investing now in yourself that you are expecting a return on. That's really what January is all about, is putting in the work, making the offer, taking the action. Even if you can't see how it's going to pay off, it's about trusting because you can see putting a gift into the portal might not result in exactly what you want immediately, but it's over time by continuing to show your investment, that's where the payoff happens. And so January is all about taking action, even if you can't see how it's um, going to pan out. The Oracle card, we have resources. The time has come to look outside of yourself. Trust that all you need to make it possible is on its way to you. Lay the bricks that will create the path to your destination. That last one is really important. You lay the bricks first, even if you can't see the outcome. And then the animal card for you is Mouse. Super, super resourceful this month because think about how scrappy a mouse can be. They can get through just about anything, wiggle their way through any doors that are set in front of them. So that is just showing your ability to be scrappy, get by, thrive, create what you need to. That That's really what this month is going to be about. But you have to take action first. The central energy for you in January is the Hierophant. Structure, boundaries, routine, all to your benefit in January. The best thing you can do for yourself is have strict rules around certain things. So maybe it's a few intentions that you have for the new year or for January by itself. At the end of the day, you just want to make sure you're adhering to something that you've committed to within yourself, and this is going to lay the groundwork for all the good things that you're calling in and that you need support in 2019. So just get be ahead of it and get ahead of it by creating boundaries first. Great time to figure out what you want to do in the morning and evening, so the book ends of your routine are going to be important as well. The crossing energy is the queen of torches. Oh, I love this card so much. It's really, really sweet. Being nurturing. Remember that your routine should be something that fills your cup. The order and structure that you're giving your life should be something that nurtures you and makes you feel good and supported. And even if there are some things that are challenging or that you don't want to do, um, especially like when it comes to fitness, getting on that wagon can suck sometimes for a lot of people. But it's it's about kind of seeing how is that nourishing you? How is that contributing to a larger picture of what you want? And that's where you can kind of get more motivation by loving yourself and knowing that what you do to support yourself has payoff. So just think about routine in terms of caring and nurturing yourself. 
What you have shifting out is the King of Feathers. So isolation is on its way out. I think you may have been in a state where you were really reserved, holding things back, maybe not socializing so much. This looks like you're actually kind of coming out of the woods of any type of isolation or feeling withdrawn from the things that you want and need. I think that things are going to be really, really flowing for you in January. So that looks good. Let's see what the oncoming energy is. We have the Knight of Shells. This actually looks like a lot of fun coming your way. Again, the idea of no longer being isolated or withdrawn or needing to do everything on your own, but instead having some comrades or friends or partners or whatever it is that you're working towards. It seems like there's more of that lighthearted fun and play that's coming into the mix. And what else? I feel like I should clarify this one actually. Let's do that. Clarifying the Knight of Shells, the oncoming energy. Nope, that one didn't want to come up. There it is. Okay, the Hierophant, again. Ah, okay. So if you want to see things through, if you really want, because this can be great for like a partnership. Also, your ability to call in the right types of supporters and the right emotional um, stability and, and whatever internal process you're craving or healing you're craving, it's going to come through the structure and groundwork that you're laying first in January. That is what's supporting you calling more love, kindness, support resources into your life. So don't forget that the structure you create for yourself is supporting all the areas of your life, not just the physical plane. The outward manifestation is the king of rocks. So you have all the information that you need. You have all of the support that you need. You have the foundation. You have the stability. You have the vision. I don't think that there's anything missing when it comes to that. This is going to be the month to commit to yourself that a lot of people are going through that at this time where they have that coming up, wanting to be more intentional with the time and space that they have. I think you're already good when it comes to that. You're already fixed. It's just about filling in some of the blanks when it comes to what you want your days and your routines to look like. When you implement structure there, everything else is going to fall into place, but you have to remember that you're worth it. That if, for those of you who struggle with self-worth or putting yourself last, any type of self-sacrificing behaviors are going to kind of throw a wrench into things. So you have to know that you are worth it. In the subconscious, we have the queen of shells. So again, we have that referencing to being nurtured or the mother. And if you, if you flub up, if you don't go at the pace that you really want to. If you make a mistake, you have to be gentle with yourself. This is not a good time to be really harsh or mean or cruel to yourself. Just know that the queen of shells and that nurturing and compassion is going to support you with whatever it is that you're going through. If you bully yourself on top of not getting things done, it's going to make you less likely to continue doing things that you need to do. It's going to make you more resistant. So if you support yourself and say, that's okay, I love you, I forgive you, I'm going to try it again. I'm going to get back on track with whatever it is my long-term plans are and whatever my routine is, then it's going to make it a lot easier on you. The advice in January is the two of feathers. I'm going to clarify this one as well. Eight of rods. So, ooh, I, I actually think that maybe you can't 
you, maybe you're not realizing just how fast you're moving. I'm getting that this is a flaming ship that's blazing and moving forward and going so, so, so fast. I just think you might not be seeing it that way. Maybe you're seeing this as something where you're not getting all these things done or you're not going as fast as you want to or you can't see the other side so it, it makes you less inclined to um, look at yourself as having success. But I think there's a lot more to this than you realize. Just because you can't see the end result doesn't mean you're not moving quickly. It doesn't mean you're not moving in the direction that you want to, but continue to apply yourself first and be grateful for the manifestations that are on their way to you right now. That's what helps kind of grease the wheels energetically. Now, in the external influences, I can't pick up this card for the life of me, is the Queen of Feathers. So I think that tendency that you have to do everything yourself or want to be independent or not have to worry, I think that's creeping back up. You might feel that it's safer to trust yourself than to allow other people to help you or support you. And it's kind of like, yes, okay, great. Yeah, you can do everything on your own, but is that actually the best thing for you to do at this time? Or is it blocking you from receiving a lot more? Because if you're just always committed to doing everything solo and independently, you're blocking out a lot of the resources that could be coming in. So know that you're going to have that temptation of going back to isolation, wanting to do everything on your own, and telling everyone to kick rocks. That's probably something that you're going to confront this month, but I think it's a good idea to challenge yourself and see if you can rely a little bit more on someone that you do trust. And then the Hopes and Fears card, we have the Page of Shells. So I think you are really looking towards what you desire. I think there's a lot of self-reflection here, and that can bring up some fear. But at the end of the day, the Page of Shells is also about um, showing love and having that expression in the types of interpersonal relationships that you do have because all of them have some type of undertone of love if they're healthy, right? The the unhealthy ones are going to be a mixed bag. But the page of shells is just reminding you that your hope is valid. The things that you desire are valid. The work is paying off because you have the knight of shells here. And so it's it's something where I just want you to be reminded of your own strength in all of this, your own ability to make things happen and see that everything is the glass half full this month because you have a lot of things going and the more you love and commit to yourself, the more that's going to ooze into other areas of your life. The outcome of the month is the sun, beautiful, vitality, energy. I think that you are feeling better and better as the month goes along. If you are taking really good care of yourself, then you're going to find that there is a significant shift in your energy levels, that there, there's something to be said about how when you start doing things that are good for you, your body and energy will respond to those things for the better. So don't underestimate the power of just doing small acts of kindness for yourself this month, because that's what recharges you. Now we're going to get into the timeline. So if you're new to my channel, hello and welcome. And we start here with the first quarter. It's about a week, give or take. Time is a little bit more fluid. Second, third, and fourth quarter, so that'll be where you end the month. First thing, this is where you start January, Mother of Pentacles. Man, oh man, talk about nourishing yourself. Because now we have the um, mother and child, you know, references all over the place here. I think that self-compassion, you want to start off the year feeling compassion, experiencing 
empathizing with yourself and remember that every emotion that you experience, every habit that you have, every coping skill that you're engaging in for the good and bad, you know, the healthy and the unhealthy, they are all a part of your your body that are trying to protect you. So have a little bit of compassion, even for those parts that you want to work out the bugs in, because there's probably a lot of contexts when those were really supportive and helpful to you in some way, shape or form. Second quarter, we have the Six of Swords. So you're really moving forward, moving on into a positive direction because we can see that like some of the, the rain is clearing and things are starting to improve. But it's all about the direction that you're going now. So whatever, whatever path you're taking, keep in mind that you are moving a lot faster than you might realize. It's just that if you're stuck in the middle of like a down slump, it can be really hard to acknowledge how far you've already come, but I'm just encouraging you to look at that whenever possible. Third quarter, we have the Sun of Swords. So things, again, the movement is so fast. I think January is just going to go by in a blink. There's so much action here. It's like you start off really being centered and then you're kind of moving out of that fog and then it's all systems go towards the end of the month. I think you're really in a flow state when it comes to your routine, when it comes to your efforts, when it comes to your pursuits. Uh, this can even have stuff if you're doing a lot of work around relationships. This can be forward movement there as well. It just depends what you're healing and what you're repairing. And wrapping up, we have the Daughter of Wands. This is very similar to the sun in that you have your energy back. I think this is like you're bouncing back all of the fatigue, withdrawal, isolation, anything that you were struggling with in that capacity is finally shifting out. So you have this nice recharge that's coming through. And there's a lot of speed in this reading, I have to tell you. Look at how fast this bird is going. So just, just know that there is a lot more in the works. Even if it feels like you're moving slowly, you're definitely not. It'll be interesting for those of you... If, okay, I just want to, before we do the three card pick, if you have Scorpio and Cancer placements and you've watched both of those readings, please let me know... Which one is resonating for you? What's your experience with that? Because Cancer's reading was totally opposite. So let me know which one is resonating more for you. I'm just curious. Go ahead, ask a question. You're welcome to ask for advice. Just pick a card that you feel called to, whatever it is that you'd like. First thing coming up is the star. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This is all the things are lining up and working out for you. This month is for you. It's working in your benefit. And I think you're really beginning to see some of the, the perks that are coming from your efforts. It's just the end piece you might be a little bit blind to still. And then card number two, we have the seven of rods. So I think that really keeping naysayers out of your space is important. Make sure you're not buying into other people's limiting beliefs and that you're keeping your energy really, really clear and not keeping it cluttered with people who simply don't have your best interest in mind. So the Seven of Rods is just like the the trying that you're doing is mostly in keeping your space decluttered from people that just aren't don't don't get it. This also, I just want to give you a heads up, it might be where you have to reduce the amount of time you're talking to certain people or communicating with certain people for your best interest. I know that's not always easy. Card number three, we have the Seven of Cups. Look at all the options that you have. There's never just one solution. There are many. There are many approaches that will work for you this month. So don't limit yourself to one thing. Really look at the broad spectrum of what you have going for you in January. 
all in all, it looks like an awesome month. So I wish you nothing but the best, Scorpio. Don't forget, check me out on Patreon if you're interested in getting more content and supporting the channel so I can keep doing these readings for you. And if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, get an energy check, an intuitive counseling session, all of the info is in the description box. And until next time, have a lovely January, everybody, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.